Wake up, samurai. We have fashion to discuss. Here I am in outfit number one here. This is a very layered look going on here. I actually have my Luke Skywalker inspired dress on underneath all of this. And on top of that, I have this twill jacket and then this neon and white hooded scarf drape situation. It's sort of like an Assassin's Creed hood thing, but with neon in the inside. And it is fully reversible. I need to make another one in black because of course a black one would be much more useful, but a white one glows in the black light, which was the idea here. But this jacket is fully lined also in this neon taffeta and has one heck of a ton of detail going on and a couple different types of Tyvek, two different colors of twill, some uh, reflective tape, which is glowing white here. That's actually reflective safety tape that you would put on like a safety vest or for any safety minded clothing. So you can glow at night or while doing construction or running or any of those things. So I will be showing you this very detailed jacket soon in a project video here on the channel. But yes, here's my Star Wars inspired Luke Skywalker jacket inspired dress, if that makes any sense, that I'm wearing underneath all of this. I can link to this video as well. 
Next up, I have a very, very shiny look here. This is a faux patent leather, a spandex made to look like latex skirt here that is mixed with actually a shiny, again, Tyvek for the jacket I'm wearing underneath this strange hooded collared vest thing. This is just a little vest in black sateen that matches the rest of my jacket that I'm wearing over the top of my suit jacket here. This has a iridescent organza lined hood, as you can see, like so. It's got that iridescent, uh, funny, weird party organza underneath it. This just hooks around my waist, just like my wrap tops usually do. I have some hooks on the underside and then a buckle on the outside. First time I've ever used a buckle, I think, but I was really happy with the top stitching, the kind of geometric contrast top stitching on this little weird hooded vest thing. And I'm excited to figure out different ways to wear this. You can arrange the collar in many different ways, which makes this kind of versatile. And I did make this Tyvek and sateen jacket over on Patreon. And these are gorgeous Nine West pumps, so I will link them below. And from patent leather to croc embossed leather, again, still faux leather in this case, I have a faux leather croc embossed coat here. I will uh, link the designer for this below. I forget who it is. I found it on a super steep discount on a discount designer like resale website. So that's where I picked this one up. This was a mock-up of a mock neck knit top pattern I'm working on. So I'm gonna perfect that before I end up showing it with you, but I did grab this fabric in teal as well, so I can make another one with all of you. And then this is just another of my stretch knit skirts that you've seen me make here on the channel, so I can link to the stretch skirt video as well below. And I paired that with those same Nine West shoes and a vintage 1940s leather clutch. Now you may remember the red Space Queen dress that would have worked for this video as well. Well, this is a black and neon version that I made over on Patreon again earlier in the year. This one has rather Maleficent vibes to me with this neon, again, yellow taffeta. This is the neon yellow taffeta from Mood Fabrics, by the way. It's really nice to work with. And then of course, with a black sateen, as is pretty usual for me, paired this with Patton, again, the Nine West pumps, a little belt from Banana Republic ages ago, some gunmetal bracelets, and then big acrylic earrings from a shop on Etsy I quite like, and I will link below. Another black sateen dress, this time paired with an oil slick faux snakeskin knit velvet embossed fabric. This is a very strange fabric. It actually looks even more iridescent in real life. It looks a little purple here. It's actually super iridescent in reality. The camera just picks up mostly purple when you look at it, but there's a two layer sleeve going on here. And then I have this giant collar that can be folded in many ways. So I can fold this closer and smaller. I can fold it all the way up to almost like a face mask or sort of a scarf kind of a thing. Fold it all the way down to a really open neckline that really shows off the decolletage or a necklace, of course. And this collar stays pretty well because this is a weird sort of velvety fabric. Normally, unless you're trying to film, it's standing up like this, in which case it doesn't cooperate. But in general, I can kind of mold this any way I would like. I think with some wire in here in the, like along the seam, it would be even more bendable, which would be quite useful. So I'll have to find some like armature wire that's like soft enough that can be bent multiple times. Cause I feel like I could get even more creative with how this collar is folded. And this is actually a wrap dress that I'm going to be making over on Patreon. So if you want to see this one, that is where that will end up. And then if we've ever wondered what I would wear if I weren't into vintage, or if I was just like a tiny, tiny bit more mask, th this next segment, I guess is the answer. Here are my high waist 1940s trousers that I wore out in the old West last year, paired with again, that same croc embossed leather coat a faux leather mock neck that I have tucked up into my bra to create a crop top out of it, like so. A really cool necklace I recently picked up on Etsy. I say recently, it actually took a long time to get here because it was shipping all the way from Romania. I will link the shop where I found this necklace below because they have a lot of really cool stuff. Um, although you do have to wait a few weeks for them to get here from Romania if you're in the United States like I am. Although perhaps it is faster if you are in Europe. The quality is definitely worth it though and they were safely wrapped. So hard to track packages from that distance, but perhaps worth it for really unique jewelry. Back in my TCH branded twill and Tyvek jacket here, worn over black leggings this time with a different pair of more wintry kind of inspired combat heeled boots. These ones are from Dream Pairs, a kind of a cheapy brand on Amazon, but they're actually quite comfortable. I've worn them out. They're very bouncy and rubbery and I like them a lot. I think they'll be great even in the snow with the thick treads on the bottom. But again, this jacket is quite versatile. I can wear this with the black over the gray, the gray over the black because there is no closure at the waist. I decided to not put a hook on there because I wanted to be able to wear different belts over it and style it in different ways. It actually looks quite good hanging open even as well. So I'm just in love with this jacket. I'm, I'm quite enamored with it. But here I just have this over a kind of ochre yellow. It's like a brown slash mustard colored knit top that I've layered over a 
really ancient H&M black asymmetric top here. And then I've just paired a like stretchy corset style belt over that to accentuate the waist a little bit, as we know how I like to have things cinched. And perhaps in some ways, mo most mask of all for me, you know, this is really on a sliding scale. I have these really silly cargo pants that I picked up. Uh, these are actually like hiking pants that I bought to go hiking, but then, you know, I didn't do a lot of hiking actually. Uh, last year as it turns out and they're just a little bit not high-waisted enough so I haven't really been wearing them but I, I like the idea in general though so perhaps I can get away with it even though they're not fully fully high-waisted then this is just a fishnet like raver kind of top that I'm wearing over a asymmetric sports bra crop top thing and then I have a couple of fun silver earrings including an ear cuff from a company called Vitaly that I uh, found a couple of really cool ear cuffs from so I will link them below not sure how ethically sourced those are uh, but hopefully they're okay. Ooh. And again, with some Dream Pairs wintry style boots, a long nylon techwear style belt. So perhaps this is my sort of hackers slash Tomb Raider Jolie alter ego. And speaking of sporty things I don't wear often, this is actually my ski jacket that I've had since I was like 13 and we first moved to Colorado. I picked it out at some, you know, ski outlet super sale because I thought it was chic with its faux fur on the collar. And I don't know, it's kind of at least a little bit cuter than most of the ski jackets I think I saw at the time, and it still barely zips up, but only barely. If I were a little more toned, perhaps it would zip up easier. And I'm wearing this ski jacket, lovely winter coat, over a high slit wool skirt that I just made because I've been seeing them everywhere on the Terry Mugler runway shows and Claude Montana mo runway shows that I watch from the 80s and 90s, and I wouldn't normally go for a slit this high, but with a robot bodysuit underneath. I think I feel full coverage enough, you know, that I can get away with such a scandalous skirt. And yes, this is just a costume, full body suit, uh, it zips up the back jumpsuit that I'm wearing underneath this, but I think it makes actually a pretty great layering piece, as opposed to just a Halloween costume. And then my true, like, 90s hacker outfit here, we have some sort of techwear inspired trousers that I picked up on Posh Poshmark, a little neon crop top, a neon nylon techwear-ish belt, and again that ski jacket, some crazy nails that I couldn't type or do anything with while I had these on, they're just press-ons, and some wire-framed cat-eye sunglasses, and of course all these temporary tattoos that I'm wearing for this video, and feeling rather silly. This is kind of like a, I don't know, like a neon raver sort of version of me, but it was very fun to play around with. But my first piece I tried layering over the robot suit was actually this stretch faux leather uh, like spandex cosplay fabric from Joann's asymmetric little knit dress. I layered that over the robot suit here, again with those wintry Dream Pairs boots, this time with a absolutely gorgeous 1980s clutch I found on Etsy this year. I am in love with this handbag. If I could have this clutch in every color, it's huge. It's so asymmetric and geometric. I love it. I wish I came in every color. It matches my nails perfectly here too. And I have some large drop earrings on, some little leather half gloves that I picked up on Amazon, and again, that cheap sort of corset style belt. And actually, I really preferred this outfit with my fur collar, a faux fur collar that I made a couple of years ago, many years ago, tied on around my back like this. I think it gives it a very Evelyn Parker touch with my little robot suit. I don't, I may not have actual cybernetics besides these contacts in my eyes today, but I thought the robot suit was, you know, helping with the vibe here. Again, something about this is also just giving me, like, cyberpunk at the ski resort. So I, I don't know what about the layering here and, like, the little bit of wintry touch of the boot that I really like. And, of course, we've all seen this dress because it was my last video here on the channel. And this is my Elements Romantica-style raincoat from Elements Rainwear. I will link them below. It's a UK-based brand who make these delicious uh, raincoats in both vintage and more modern-inspired styles. And in most colors you could ever dream of, this is the dark green, of course, because I want the glass green it's my favorite and yes this is a white faux fur collar that it glows uh, i saw one like this and i couldn't get in time so i i found a white faux fur collar and i found a pack of led lights and i sewed the lights into the collar so that's how this goes and i can i have a little remote for it and i can change the color that it lights up which is quite fun again i don't rave so i don't really know when this will come in handy in my life but it is quite glam you know if i ever do find a real bar that's quite Blade Runner themed, I can perhaps wear this color out and about. And when it comes to sci-fi looks, it doesn't get much more ridiculous than this two or three color multicolor spandex fabric. This is again a fabric from Joann's cosplay line. Um, this is a very duochrome or multichrome spandex fabric. It's super, super fun. I actually made little short fingerless gloves and long fingerless gloves out of this. Couldn't decide, so I wore one of each because we're leaning into the asymmetric vibes. This is again two faux fur collars that I sewed together to create a larger shawl like this in this lovely 
black and royal blue, again with the acrylic clutch that I will link below. I can show you how to make these dresses, by the way, this and the leather one from before. Uh, these are both just little dresses I threw together down here in the sewing room. While I learned to work with knits, so if you'd like to see this dress pattern made up, I can show you. It's very quick and easy. But now, the moment you've all been waiting for. It's the iridescent organza trench coat. Well, it turned out to be more of a duster because I couldn't include all the details that I perhaps originally wanted to in this buddy because the fabric was just too fragile. This is two layers of this organza. I have a project video coming for this little duster soon here, so you'll see how I put this together, how I made the pattern, and how I went about sewing this very strange fabric, and you'll hear, hear about all my trials and tribulations working with this. It is a very fun kind of costumey piece. It's not the most stable piece ever, so it wouldn't be like a good daily wear situation. But then again, who would wear this daily? You must have a very fun life. Uh, this is my Norma Kamali iridescent knit skirt that I again picked up from a super discount designer website. Honestly, just to study the seam finishes they were using for their knits, and I'm surprised at how much straight stitch is used in this skirt as opposed to any sort of a a serger machine. And then I made this iridescent two-tone mock neck to go with this. Again, I can show you these knit tops here on the channel soon. And then lastly today I have this other coat here that's a little bit more substantial. I could actually wear this one out and about, although there is a little bit of silk involved in this one. The pocket lining, uh, the inside of the cuffs of the sleeves, and then the inside of the collar here are actually a Dupioni silk from Silk Baron. The rest of this is a cotton sateen, a rather thick and sturdy cotton sateen from moodfabrics.com. The rest of the jacket inside also is lined in a Mood Fabrics taffeta in an aqua color that is of a similar shade to this silk, but I actually made this after being disappointed with how few details I could include on the iridescent one, so I again experimented with this weird foldable collar that's a bit inspired by Rick Owens um, in the way that he does leather jackets. They have this very large foldable collar that you can wear in several different ways. And then of course without the belt, this is almost like a swing coat and can be worn open like this. I'm wearing this over again high-waisted cotton blend trousers that I made last year for a more like Peaky Blinders kind of vibe um, for my 1940s pattern, but today with obviously a hollow mock neck crop top and then some gray boots. Uh, it's more of a, again, I don't know, rave slash Tomb Raider look, which neither things I participate in, but you know, again, my alter ego perhaps does. And I did film the making of this coat. It will actually be the bonus holiday thank you video over on my Patreon. You'll be seeing this coat soon. And thank you so much to my patrons and to viewers like you for making videos like this possible. Thank you.